Hi, this is the second video in a water management tutorial in which we use GoldSim to uh, build a model of a water system starting at a, a very simple level. From our first video, we looked at just a simple reservoir with an inflow time series and a constant outflow. In this second tutorial, we're going to add to it some logic so that the, uh, the water demands on the reservoir are turning on and off during the year to represent the irrigation season in which we have demands uh, versus during the off season when we don't have any demand. So in this, uh, in this tutorial, we will add a container and within that, if you go inside, then you'll see the logic behind um, turning the water on and off during the irrigation season. And so that's what we're going to do in this presentation. All right, so what I'll do is I'll start with the, uh, the point at which we ended in, a, in the last tutorial, and that's right here. And just to review, when I run the model, what we see here is, bring this up, we have the reservoir in blue as it's drawing down when the water demand is greater than the inflow, then the, the opposite happens, the, in, the uh, inflow increases. Uh, the reservoir volume increases up to its upper bound in which it hits the, uh, the, the upper bound, we have an overflow that occurs. And then again, the demands increase above the, above the inflow, water volume draws down to a point at which the demand is equal to the inflow. So that's what happened during our last presentation. And now what we're going to do is we, we just want our irrigation supply to be delivered during the irrigation season. And so that is based on some inputs that we have in the, in the uh, spreadsheet file. I'll go over to that. In the spreadsheet file, we have two tabs, climate data and reservoir data. If I go to climate data, then you'll see here we have an irrigation demand table for the months of the year. And over here, it says that we, um, in, in June, we have a demand of uh, 250 liters per second, and then it ends at the end of September. Um, a constant rate, but um, is only on during during the uh, irrigation season. So we want to re we want to represent that logic. There are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, what I'll do today is show you a status element in order to represent that logic. Okay, so we'll go back into GoldSim and I'll change this back to edit mode. And then what I'm going to do is, um, because I'm, I'm going to be running out of space here to add elements, I'm going to create a container. The container is up here in the containment uh, category. And then I just select container, add it there. And now what I want to do is I want to add everything related to water supply into that container. And I'm going to call this container water supply, of course. Okay, so the two things right now that are related to it, that the demand and the supply. I'm going to put both of those in there. And now what you'll see is that our influence line has two arrows on it. In fact, what's happening is there are two influence lines and I can, I can click on this center part and drag these out so you can see the influence as it goes back and forth from the reservoir. What this means is the demand influences the reservoir. The reservoir convert, um, uh, at the same time uh, influences the uh, water supply output. Okay, so I'm going into this container by clicking on this uh, blue button here. You can also see that uh, over here in the browser window, it shows you the location in the hierarchy of the model. Okay, so this is our irrigation demand. It's actually not completely the demand. It's the, we're, we're gonna call this the demand capacity because um, the actual demand is turning on and off. So I'm just gonna change this name to demand capacity, meaning it's the flow capacity of the irrigation demand, not just the, the demand all the time. Also, um, in as you saw in the spreadsheet file, the the actual flow rate of this capacity is not is no longer 175, it's now 250. So we'll change that there. And now what we want to do is define the irrigation season. And I'm going to do that again with data elements. I'm going to add two of these one for the beginning of the irrigation season. And I'm gonna call this um, irrigation season begin. And this is the month that the season begins. And that's just going to be a number between one and 12 to indicate the month. And as you saw in the, in the Excel file, it was, it was June, so I'll put six there. The next one, I'm just gonna copy and paste this 
is when it ends, irrigation season end. The month that the season ends. And uh, it ended at the end of September, so I'm going to put there October, indicating that as soon as we hit October, it's going to stop. Okay, so now that we have the season defined, I'm going to use a status element, which is up here in the events category. I'll put a status element here, and this will be called irrigation season. And this is a, the output of a status element is interesting. It's not a value, it's a Boolean. So what this means is when, uh, when, it's, when it returns true, then it's um, then the irrigation season is on false if off. Okay, to set this status to be true, we need to trigger it. And in GoldSend, because it's a hybrid simulator, not just a continuous simulator, we can add events to it. And the way to create an event is to trigger it. And so this is this is a, a common uh, dialogue that you're going to see in GoldSim called the triggering dialogue. And when I click on it, it brings up all of the triggers that you want to add to cause this element to become true. And so in our case, we want it to become true when the irrigation season begins, which is in June. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a new trigger, and then the type is going to be on true. So when this thing becomes true, whatever statement I put in here, when this statement becomes true, then it causes a trigger to occur. And my trigger is going to be when the month and by the way, Goldson knows what the current month is because it's running through a calendar um, simulation. And so I'm going to say when the month equals, and I could just say six here, and that would work, but I've already defined the six, the value six, in this element called irrigation begin or season begin. So I'm just going to refer to that. Irrigation season begin. So when the month equals the beginning of this irrigation season, this triggers to true. Now we need to turn it off. And then we do a similar thing here. We do it with the irrigation season ends. I'm going to add on true month equals irrigation season end. And that's all there is to it. So you can see the irrigation season begin and end both influence the status. All right, with this here now, I want to create an if statement that says if the irrigation season is on, then I want you to apply this irrigation demand cap. So I'm going to do that with this, what's called a selector element. And that's up here in the, the functions category. I'm going to select selector, and I will just put that right underneath here. And now this will become the new irrigation demand. Actual irrigation demand during the season only. Okay, and again, we need to put the units in here, so it's liters per second. That's usually the first thing you want to do when you create a new element, is put the ID, the description, and the units in. Most of the time, you want to do that. Make sure you have that as a habit. Okay, then I want to refer to this uh, the status element, the irrigation season. So I'll put that right here, if irrigation season. And we don't even need to say if that equals true. This is a redundant statement. Um, because the output is a Boolean, so if the irrigation season... Then we need to put that irrigation capacity in there, irrigation demand capacity, otherwise it's going to be zero. So during the irrigation season, apply that demand capacity. Now that we have that, I'm just going to move things around here, put that over here, and move this all over there. Okay, now we still have one thing left to do, and that is to hook everything up correctly. Now, if you look at these elements, you'll see that and some of them have a little box next to them with a little dot in there. The box indicates that there's either an input port or an output port. Input ports are on the left, output ports are on the right. And if you click on them, they show you what the outputs are. If there is a dot inside of the square, it means that the, the output value is being referenced in a different location in the model. So what this is telling us right here, this irrigation demand cap, it is being referenced by someone outside. It is actually going into the reservoir to, to be applied as the outflow. We don't want to use this element anymore. We want to use this one instead. But just to, just to um, confirm where this is being used, we can right click on the element and select effects to see what this element affects. And you can see that it affects two things. It affects the element we just added, irrigation demand, and it also affects the reservoir. And if I click on it, it takes me there, and then I can open up the reservoir, and I can confirm in the outflows. 
the irrigation demand cap is indeed the element being referenced. The wrong one, however. So I need to change this by removing the word cap and the underscore. And then what it does is it automatically creates a link to the new element we get created because it has that name, irrigation demand. And I can verify that by going back into the container and looking at this new element that now has the dot in the output port there. This means we moved the output um, that's being referenced in the reservoir from the capacity over to the actual demand that's changing over time. Now, if I go back up, you'll see everything else looks about the same. And that's good. Now let's just check to make sure that we're still plotting the same outputs. If I open up the time history, you see that we're still referring to the correct uh, water supply called irrigation supply, and that's the element that's inside the container that we never touched. And so it should still show us the correct outputs. Now when I run the model, oh, and there's one more thing I want to change, and that is the initial value of the volume. Uh, because we're not running as much, or we're not supplying as much uh, volume, I'm going to start this off at a little bit lower uh, water volume. I'll change it to 11,700. Now I'll run the model and look at the result. And now what we see is the reservoir volume is increasing, and it is increasing at the beginning because we don't have any irrigation demand being applied. Then the water volume increases sharply as the uh, inflow increases. We get to a point where we hit the upper bound and we have immediate overflows occurring. Now, finally, the irrigation turns on and draws the reservoir volume back down to a point where it hits the lower bound. And you see just for a moment, the demand is equal to the inflow. We can zoom in on that to see what's happening. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle around this area by holding the control key on my keyboard at the same time as drawing this rectangle. And now you can see that the reservoir, or I mean the uh, irrigation demand drops down to the point that it can maintain this lower elevation in the reservoir by simply applying the, or changing the water demand to be equal to the net inflow. And then I'll just right click in here in the chart and select reset scale to see the entire chart again. And that concludes the uh, second tutorial that um, allowed us to include some logic for turning the, the um, irrigation flow on and off.